Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Duo Group Iron Man. Last video, I spent my time training crafting. I got 3 million XP getting me from level 81 to 90, which means I can now start doing Redwood Birdhouse runs. Corrupt Gauntlet is just something I keep on coming back to, and I know I just keep on saying this over and over throughout the series, but like I really want to get the Enhanced Crystal Weapon Seed because there's so much content that I'm kind of waiting to do until I get that. Like I could just keep on skilling and just make the whole series just me maxing, but I really want to like do PVM and not just rush max because I like being able to do a variety of content. Although I guess right now there's not much variety in the PVM I do because all the PVM I do at this point is just CG. So I'm gonna start off with this today. Um, maybe we'll go for like 700 KC and I'll see how I'm feeling from there. Crystal armor seed, yay. Back to back. Oh man, okay, regular crystal up. <laughs> this one's the big 700 KC, surely a reward for, okay. Wow, another crystal armor seed. Great, that was actually the last gauntlet I was gonna do tonight because it's time for dinner. Actually, I gotta do like farm run in his spory first. I really need to get another bottomless bucket, dude. First, redwood birdhouse run, iconic. It is that time again to claim the Ecto tokens? We got 1,000. I still really want a D pick, so we are back at Castelli, and I'm gonna try my luck tonight. Oh, yes, yes, dude! Oh my god, <laughs> yes. 199 KC. I was like getting ready to make a clip for 200 KC um, after the next kill, but we got that. So one out of 256 drop. So uh, let's just quickly get out of the wheelie. I mean, even at this point it is completely secured. I remember on my UYM, it was stressful the whole time because UYMs lose all items on death no matter what. But on this account, I can protect four items and the D pick is probably my top or second top kept item. So, oh, dude, yes. Oh, actually got lucky with this. I feel a little bit better now about going dry for the enhanced seed after getting the dragon pickaxe. It doesn't completely make up for it, but I do feel a little bit better now. Let's put it on. Yes, the dragon pickaxe, of course, is better than the rune pickaxe, so it'll be nice for mining and for chambers of Zeric in the guardian's room. Uh, the D pick, of course, does more damage than the rune pick. So uh, no more late nights at Chaos Ellie anymore anytime soon. I mean, I'd probably like to go back for the pet if I don't get it from the Chaos Fanatic by the time I finish the collection log there. Maybe I'd go back to Chaos Ellie for the pet. I wouldn't be surprised if in the future Jagex moves the D pick to somewhere not Willy related. I feel like they brought that up on stream or were like the Jmods were seriously suggesting it or something at some point. I feel like I heard it somewhere at least, but no matter what happens, that's okay. I'm just glad to have my D Pick. So now when Spook asks me for a D pick, I can actually give her one. Oh, that's my uh, nightly excuse to not do gauntlet completed. So now I have to go back to doing gauntlet every night if I'm going to be grinding it out. So here we are back here again. That's the last CG before bed tonight. Here's what I did today, what I got today. 31 corrupt gauntlet, two armor seeds, 18 chaos elemental, and a D pick. Better luck tomorrow at CG. Good night. First gauntlet of the day. Oh my god, yes! <gasps> Dude. It finally happened! Oh my god, that's the last thing you expect first thing when you wake up. Dude, technically I got the D pick and the enhanced seed in the same day because I got the D pick at like 1 a.m. and now it's 10 a.m. and. Oh, oh my god, dude. <laughs> last thing I was expecting. Okay, let's go make the bow. I saw that in my inventory and it took a second to register. I thought it was just a regular crystal weapon seed, but then I saw like all the pop-up messages in the chat box. <laughs> Dude, this is ridiculous. Like look at the amount of everything <laughs> that I have. 5,800 crystal shards. That was 710 KC. And then here is all the loot from, uh, well, like, I guess this counts the deaths too, but all the loot from 710 completed corrupt gauntlets. We got the two pets, almost 400 mil in value. Just the uh, enhanced seed was 153 mil. So one out of 400 for the enhanced seed and I didn't even have to go double the drop rate. Okay, bro, but tell me how sick would these look in a thumbnail? I can't use it for this thumbnail because that'd be like spoilers, but like, you know, for the next video or something, if I, if I had these six in the thumbnail, that'd be sick. To make the bofa, we have to use the singing bowl 
And oh my god, what a beautiful interface. You need 82 crafting and 82 smithing to be able to make it yourself. So let's go ahead and make the Bofa. And it takes 100 crystal shards too. Get a little bit of crafting, a little bit of smithing XP. You can add crystal shards to it and each crystal shard gives you 100 charges, which is just 100 shots from it. Or you can corrupt it on the singing bowl by using 2000 crystal shards with it and that gives it unlimited charges. It's kind of weird to call it corrupt because in RS3 corrupt meant that it has charges and it degrades when you run out. So kind of backwards. But anyways, uh, let's use the 2000 crystal shards and Yes. Oh, 1900 because it comes with 10k charges already. Cool. And there we go. The Corrupt Bow of Ferdinand. Let's equip it for the first time. Oh, it's beautiful. We can recolor it too. There's someone around here that sells recolors. You can just change it anytime you want as long as you just buy a different crystal, but blue is my favorite color. So at least for now, I'm going to go with the blue one. It costs 500k for the crystal thingy. You can just use it on there. Yes, and now I got a blue bofa. Oh, we have to make the crystal armor set too because I've never made that. I just had all the seeds sitting in the bank for a while. So let's make sure it's set to one, one of those. And we'll make the body. Yeah, this is like the crafting training meta for like super rich trillionaire players. Okay, and then we'll make the helm and there's the full crystal set. Put that on. Yo, dude, yo. I didn't even think about the fact that the blue bow would kind of match it too. It's probably, I think that other blue shade might match it better, but I don't care. I just like blue. Anyways, it's so freaking cool, dude. I've never owned this bow before on any account. I've never owned a piece of crystal armor before on any account. This is all new for me. And once I use it, it'll be my first time using it ever as well. I just want to go down here to check the notice board to, or the scoreboard to see like my total deaths and total completions. Well, 710 total completions and 30 deaths. It's pretty decent, I feel like. Okay, how long did I spend at Corrupt Call? I had 710 total KC, and if you say average 4.5 kills per hour, like after deaths and stuff, that's over 150 hours at Corrupt Call to get this done. Uh, it was worth it though, definitely worth it. Before you actually get that rare drop after you've been grinding it for a while, it's like everything just seems like hopelessness and despair and it's like I'm never gonna get it and this is so awful because you don't know when it's actually gonna happen but a lot of the time after you get the drop, even if you did go a bit dry for it, it's like in retrospect that wasn't so bad. It's just in the moment you don't, you have no idea how long you're gonna be there for but so that's how I'm feeling right now. Like looking back, it wasn't too bad. If I had known from the start that I would get it at 710kc, I would still do it. I'd be like, yeah, it wasn't too bad. It just sucks when you're at that 709kc without having it. Now you cannot corrupt the crystal armor pieces, so I will have to continually upkeep the shards on those. And just like with the bow and I think with like everything else, one shard equals 100 charges. Oh, is there a limit? Can you only add up to... Okay, I guess we'll just add the max to each of them. Okay, so these now each have 20,000 charges. The crystal armor loses charges for each time you take a successful hit, but if you have protection pairs on, then it's not going to lose charges if you're protecting against the attack style. Without the crystal armor set, the Bofa isn't really that good, but it's because of the accuracy and damage bonuses of the set. I mean, I probably won't necessarily always be using the helm, but even just with the body and legs, you can see 25% accuracy, 12.5% damage. That makes it really, really good. You know what I got to do next though, right? I mean, obviously first bird has to run, but let's try out the Bofa at Chambers. If I'm using crystal now, I probably shouldn't be using void anymore. So I'm gonna have to really change the setup. Probably not gonna bring blowpipe into Chambers either. Here's a before and after of my old solo chamber setup. Uh, I used to use the Void, which I'm not anymore. Um, I had to upkeep the Ruby Bolts and bring the Rune Crossbow with me, which I don't have to do now. Instead, I could bring a Blessing for the extra prayer bonus. Overall, those should be better defense and maybe a bit more DPS. I'm not sure if I really need Aram's top and bottom, like if I need the accuracy and if the weight of them is really going to be worth it. Um, I'll bring both of them with me for this raid and just see how it goes. I got the raid scouted on the main though, so let's head on in. And of course, now we got the Dragon Pickaxe to slightly save a bit of time. Also, I know I look weird without the fire cape. I'm just trying to have as many inventory spots as possible while also maximizing DPS between the different combat styles because I'm still pretty new to doing solo raids. So I need as many brutes as possible for Ulm. This will be my first time ever firing a shot from the Bofa. Let's see how it looks. Oh, beautiful. 
Hey, now I can both around the corner, both around the corner, on pace, on pace, on pace, both around the corner, miss no ticks, miss no ticks, restart, restart. Dude, shamans are so nice now, like even without worrying about getting them into a safe spot, the both is so freaking sweet. Of course, tightrope too. Oh man, I feel like range is so important in raids, so getting this upgrade is like a really, really big upgrade. No more meleeing mutt either, I just can't prey range. I can kill scavs from across the room. Uh, previously I wouldn't do that because I wouldn't want to waste charges on like the blowpipe or waste bolts or something, so I'd have to melee them, but now I can just range them. Just for future reference for myself, when I go into Ulm, this is what my inventory setup looks like. I drink a sip of the stamina and a sip of each of these and then just replace them with the full versions I have in here. I have one less brood than I had with my void setup, so maybe I should get rid of like Aram's top or bottom or something. Yeah, I'm just going to take out the bottom here and then replace that. Yeah, just to be safe. I feel like it shouldn't make that much of a difference with the DPS. Yo, dodge, dude. I made a lot of mistakes, but hopefully the Bofa is gonna carry me through the head phase here. Dude, I love this freaking Bofa, it's so nice. <laughs> uh, beautiful. This is fun. It's, it's so much more fun with the Bofa. I made so many mistakes too when I was like trying to record as well, so I was messing up even more. Um, but with all that, I still it is still really, really nice. It's a 53 KC. I forgot to bring the salve, but honestly, just with the anguish, it's smacking perfectly fine. So with the Bofa, um, salve might not be necessary. There are certain methods you could run at head phase, like five to one or one to zero, or I think what I'm doing is considered three to one. I wasn't really being too strategic with my movement here since I'm just happy to have the bow and I'm only a few raids in so far. The one to zero method is if you're low on bruise, you can hit like ones per side and then you dodge all of Ulm's attacks but it's really slow, so you're gonna have to make sure you have enough stamina. Plus, if you're a scrub like me, you're gonna be taking a lot of damage from the Falling Rocks anyway, so it's probably not worth it for me. I think the biggest thing I need to get used to with the Bofa versus the Blowpipe is just how far away I can be from the monsters. Like, I keep running up close to them, but I don't need to. Ooh, I got a PB, 36 minutes. I'm pretty sure all the time I'm shaving off is just from head phase on Ulm. Hey, here's a fun clip of the Bofa, or I should say me having fun with the Bofa, but not like that, that's for a different website. Anyways, three-shotting the mage is very satisfying. This might be the most supplies I've ever had left over after a solo raid. Here's a clip of me figuring out how to like dodge the falling crystals while I'm running the mage hand. Now, theoretically, I, you should never get the falling crystals while you're running mage hand if you're doing it properly, which clearly I was not, but I just thought this was a cool clip of me like figuring stuff out. Oh no, dude. Oh, the freaking I was I was distracted. <laughs> Bro, I swear to god. Is it? No! Nice to have all these supplies on the ground though. Yeah, that's enough reading for today. Here's dinner for today. We went to this place called Cineholic and we brought the cinnamon rolls to this park and we're just hanging out at night and she's got what was it chocolate and stuff and I got chocolate and peanut butter because I love peanut butter. And there's cookie dough on it. Oh yeah. Okay with the flash it looks a little bit better. You can see the colors a bit better because the lighting here isn't the best but oh my god dude. This is the best and worst decision we're making all week. Well doing my farm run tonight and we got 91 farming which is two spirit trees without having to boost. Tonight is gonna be AFK woodcutting and there's level 91. Wait, didn't we just get 91 farming? Yeah, I just, I said 91 and then I said, wait, why do I have so many level 91s? I just noticed that, that's weird. Anyways, uh, woodcutting tonight time is now, yes. PB, yes, I think I will choose to get a reward for getting this PB. I also did some agility last night and agility this morning, but now I'm ready to send it back for a few more chambers. Oh no, I'm almost out of staminas, except I'm not because I made a bunch of them into one dose potions and I have a bunch of other dose potions. Hello Bob, it's been a while. This was the raid when 4 to 1 finally clicked for me, and this is the exact moment I recorded on my replay buffer when it clicked. This whole time I had always been trying to like count the ticks of when to attack to try and get into 4 to 1, and the timing on that has just always been so hard for me to get 
but I figured out you can get into the proper attack cycle just like doing 4 to 1 in team raids when you're on melee hand, which is obvious now in retrospect, I don't know why I didn't think about that earlier. When Ulm is facing right, I go just to the left side of the head, and then just like in team raids, you click the hand so that you move the same tick the head is going to move, and then you're in the right attack cycle. And then from there you just get into the 4 to 1 whether you have to do a 3 to 1 or wait a couple extra hits if you get specials or whatever. But yeah, this was the moment in my head where 4 to 1 just clicked for me, and I think it's going to make Ulm a lot less stressful going forward. Dude, look how many supplies I had left over. <laughs> this is so good. <gasps> yes, dude. Oh my god, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh my god, the freaking decks. Oh. oh my god, dude, that is freaking insane. I can't believe it. <laughs> dude, I've just been excited to like finally get 4 to 1 down and stuff, but this was... This was like the thing I wanted. <laughs> oh my god, it, it's just... Okay, well, let's read it and learn rigor. Dude, that was such a clean raid too. It was a PV as well, 34 minutes. Well, that's uh... It's a pretty solid two days of playing RuneScape. Freaking D pick, Bofa, and then Dex. <sighs> I'll just show you the collection logs for the different bosses that I've recently done. So here's Chaos Ellie. Oh, Gauntlet is greened out, right? I, yes, because that was the last thing in the log. So there's the Gauntlet log, and then here is the Chambers log. Three purples in my name in about 1.5 million personal points, which is really lucky. I should have expected to have gotten about two, so. Very, very lucky, especially just glad to have the decks out of the way because that's one of the best upgrades in the game that you can get. Because, I guess I should show this if you don't know what it does, it increases your ranged attack by 20%, ranged damage by 23%, and then defense by 25%. Compared to Eagle Eye, which is just increases your ranging by 15%. I cannot think of a better place or a better way to wrap up this video than getting the freaking deck, dude. I want to go to the Sarah because I really want to get SGS before I get back into Slayer, so maybe next video or sometime in the very near future we are going to be going to to Sarah and trying out some duo methods there. I still can't believe how lucky I've been the last couple days, dude. It's ridiculous. Um, but if you haven't already, make sure to check out my duo teammate Spook Dogs channel, which you can find a link to in every video description. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope that you have a great day, and I will see you again next time.